Thank you. Yes. Yes, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's community call. And particularly, obviously, Leah Sensei and Gaston Nicolese Sensei. Um, <clears throat> just a quick intro for both Senseis. Uh, Leah is the National Director of Aikido Kenkika International USA, and the headquarter dojo is in Los Angeles. Um, and Leah Sensei is ranked six dan, and Aikido Kenki Kai is headed up by uh, Takeda Shihan in Yokohama. And also, welcome to Gaston Sensei, he's the director of La Rosa Rey. Did I, did I say that right? That's Gaston. correct, Nick. Your French is good. <laughs> Rosary Dojo in Toulouse, ranked fifth Dan, and you've been training since you were 11 years old. Thanks. Okay, so <clears throat> today's topic is, is Aikido being ghosted by millennials? How to attract and keep millennials, millennials in your dojo? Um, and we've spoken a little bit about this and the sort of the label of millennial. And um, you know, really, we're talking about young people in the age range of 18 to 39. So probably probably won't use that label um, during the call. Everyone's different. Um, so yeah, it's really about looking at motivation. That's the theme of the call, and particularly in regard to younger people. So. I'd like to start then by asking both senseis a little bit about their own motivation to train and and we can also learn a bit more about your your journeys in in this art so um Leah sensei when you started out <clears throat> when you started out what kept you coming back to the dojo that's a great way of putting it what kept me coming back um <clears throat> really i would say the the combination of endorphins and adrenaline uh, and fellowship, so which maybe uh, contributed to endorphins too. But um, yeah, it was a great workout. It was exciting. It required my total focus in that moment. Um, no, no past, no future, just total uh, now. And um, great workout and instant friendships. Um, yeah. I was also really fascinated with how uh, the, the throws looked so effortless. Um, and I liked how the teacher uh, often drew parallels between the movements, what we were working on physically, and uh, obstacles and challenges in life, and how that could be applied outside the dojo. So in a nutshell, that's it. Okay, so it sounds like it was leaving you feeling good. Yeah, <laughs> very. And you were making friends and there was camaraderie in the dojo. That's exactly it, yeah. And also it wasn't a narrow kind of sense of training. There was applications that you could see practice would have outside in your everyday life. Exactly, yeah. Okay, great. Um, Gaston Sensei, how about you? What kept you coming back to the dojo as, as a teenager? Yeah, actually, as you mentioned earlier in, in your in your opening, I uh, I started Aikido when I was eleven. Uh, I started uh, when I was uh, I was born in Madagascar, uh, so I started there, and then I moved to France when I was fifteen, and then I had a four year uh, break. Uh, because I was at the high, I was at high school, and then uh, when I resumed my practice, I, uh, it was actually at the Dojo de la Rose in, in Toulouse, where, where I now where I now teach, and uh, which uh, uh, which is uh, where I belong right now. So what um, what motivated me uh, with Aikido when I started? I was a um, a kind of a, a fragile uh, type of uh, boy. Uh, fragile and uh, quite fearful so my dad actually took me took me out to to the to the 
to the dojo in, in, in Tulia in Madagascar at the time. And um, ever since then, I, 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 I never quit because I, I really enjoyed the, uh, the depth of the discipline. Uh, because first you start because with, with the, uh, all the fun part of it, you know, as a kid, you, you roll, you fall and you, you laugh, etc. And then you, and then you, you maybe get hooked with the, uh, the self-defense aspect of it. Once you're a little bit, you know, older, uh, let's say 18, 20, 25. And then as you grow older, I think you're really more attracted to, um, what is, um, uh, you know the the the, the inter interpersonal relation that that it builds with, with your with with others you know connecting with others all this this uh, uh, social dimension of Aikido that's that's what really keeps me going right now. Okay, so that motivation has developed over the years um, to wait to a place where you're now more interested in in the connection between people between. UK and Nage. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, my journey, my, my Kiro journey has, has now also taken another turn because uh, uh, in 2018, my teacher, Frank Noel, that may, may, maybe some of you know, uh, Shihan Seventh Dan, uh, actually um, decided to, to give over the dojo to me. You know, I mean, we, we, we had a uh, he, he decided that I should take over and this is what uh, this is what I'm doing right now since uh, since uh, about two years ago now so that's another another step uh, in mm. the journey yeah what um, impact has that had on your purpose and motivation for training well I I, 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 uh, I was already a teacher I, I was teaching Aikido in, 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 in uh, some other part of Toulouse and also in the dojo once a week, but taking over from, from Frank Noel was really a big step as it um, suddenly, you know, uh, led great responsibility on my shoulder as how to lead the group and how to, to make everyone happy uh, and how to, to, to manage the, 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 the mix of generation. Okay, well, of course, we're going to focus on, on the younger uh, generation in this talk, but I also had to deal with, uh, you know, uh, older generation, the, the people who were already there. Some sometimes my senpais were also there, and I had to 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 lead them somehow. So that that was really a um, a big a big uh, challenge for me at the beginning. But hopefully now things are starting to really uh, work well. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and Leah Sensei. Uh, how about your motivations changing over the years? Is it still endorphins, camaraderie, and applications off the mat that motivate you now? Uh, it's uh, it is, but some other things have uh, have been added. Um, now that I'm teaching, um, I find it so rewarding to see people develop not just develop in their Aikido or, you know, their Shihonage gets better, the, their Irimi-nage gets better, N not just that, but, you know, when, when pe I mean, that's exciting too, to see somebody get some physical skills uh, that they didn't have before, <clears throat> to progress in those skills. But when somebody, you know, when somebody tells me, a woman actually told me one time, she said, wow, you know, actually I never told you, but when I started Aikido, uh, I was really having problems uh, in my marriage. And now I credit Aikido with saving my marriage. It's like, wow. And, you know, can you, do, are you comfortable telling me more? She said, well, first of all, I was so exhausted when I went home every night that I couldn't, I had no energy to argue. <laughs> so that was the, the simple level. Mm. Um, but, um, but yeah, this, this aspect of conflict resolution. Or maybe something so simple as uh, a parent told me one time, my child was riding his bike. I was watching my child ride his bike. Uh, he suddenly hit a stone or something, went flying through the air, did a beautiful ukemi, my ukemi, popped right back up, jo just got back on his bike. She credits Aikido with you know, him not getting injured. 
So all these other applications, um, these, these, uh, these ways that Aikido is enriching my students' lives, that's really rewarding to me too. Uh, I still love the, uh, you know, the endorphins and adrenaline um, and the effortlessness. Still, you know, just the, the throws. Sometimes my students tell me this is like greatest compliment I can imagine. Like, oh, wow, you know, sometimes it's imperceptible. I can't feel you throwing me. And I go, oh, my gosh, you know, but it doesn't always feel that way to me. Mm. Every now and then I get a couple of throws that I go, oh, whoa, that was a good one. You know, like really maybe just once a week, like, whoa, that's, that's the one, you know. And yeah. uh, it's when it's effortless and magical and imperceptible to me as well. Anyway those cool ricochets yeah that's what excites you yeah all, all aligns and connects in that way yeah great um <clears throat> so um i saw gaston sensei on your bio that you've trained wing chun for a couple of years and so i'm curious in terms of motivation did you ever think about quitting aikido and if so what what reinvigorated your practice you're oh. you're muted gaston sensei yeah huh that's strange and it says that i can't unmute you there okay you i'm done all right well thanks thanks for for, for the question uh, yes actually you're right as, as i mentioned earlier um uh, you know as as uh, as you grow up uh, your your motivation um, uh, source can 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 change, you know, a little bit mm. from from the fun part to to the self defense aspects to whatever else uh, later. So w I felt the, the the need to to have a break uh, from my kiddo when I was around twenty five. I'm I'm forty seven right now, and uh, that was also I was also away from France, so I was in Australia. And uh, of course, I wanted to. I was second down, and I wanted to, 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 you know, keep up doing aikido. But first of all, the aikido I saw. Sorry, but if there are some any any Australian people here, but the the aikido I I, I, I had to to do there was not really interesting for me, right? So I I decided to to take a step away, and and, and uh, actually a friend of mine took me to a to a Wing Chun Kung Fu class. And I really enjoyed the Kung Fu very much because of many, many things. First of all, we, you can draw very uh, strong parallels with Aikido, you know, uh, principles of Aikido, controlling the center line, relaxing the upper body, not to pose force with force. All this sort of stuff, actually, I could really find, uh, uh, I could really find in, in, uh, in, the, in the Kung Fu Wing Chun there. And uh, so I was really, you know, uh, brought. I mean, I was really happy with that. So that's why I I, I quit Aikido, and then I, and then when I came back to to France, it, it uh, I kept doing it for another two years or so. And uh, what reinvigorated my, my my practice, what made me come back to Aikido, is uh, is when I finally um, had the opportunity to go back to Toulouse to my own dojo. When I saw my 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 fellow comrades that I left uh, four years ago. Uh, when I saw Frank again, and uh, you know this, uh, you know, kind of uh, nostalgia of the of the practice uh, helped me um, uh, get back to the dojo. And then uh, this is really the main point. What I was looking for, I was looking for martial efficiency. That, in my opinion, as a young uh, guy, there was a little bit missing in 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 the way we, we were doing Aikido. Aikido was being for me a little bit too soft and fake somehow yeah? so that's why i was running away from this from it so when i when i when i came back to toulouse and i came back to my dojo all of a sudden actually what i was looking for was right there under my very eyes so uh, maybe i was not just ready enough, uh, ready enough to to read it when i was uh, younger mm -hmm. but suddenly it appeared to me very clear that uh, this this uh, what i was 
you know, looking for in, in other discipline was actually uh, present at the heart of our discipline. And it, and it took me, a, you know, a long journey maybe to find this out. But mm. I think it also had to do very much with the, with my teacher's style, of course, is with what he has, uh, uh, you know, what his Aikido is all about. So yeah. that's make it short. Wow. So training in another discipline, you, you feel that when he came back to Aikido, it, it helped you see things from a different perspective? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So I would not recommend this for, for you know, as, as like a... a and and, and uh, a, a must uh, go passage for everyone yeah but i think sometimes you know if you bring distance if you if you widen uh, the gap and and if you if you take a step away from from what you do you know uh, every day in, in, the, mm. in the dojo then sometimes you can see things in a in a, in a different perspective and and uh, you, sh you see the beauty of aikido yeah okay. sure okay great um Leah Sensei, I'm sure you've been on one or two plateaus yeah. on your Aikido journey. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> perhaps you could share what re reinvigorated your practice. Sure. Um, <clears throat> well, the one that comes to mind first was uh, 2008. And uh, I guess it started in 2007. <clears throat> Our rent was $1,200 per month. Uh, we put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into the dojo. The whole dojo community came together to build this dojo, to renovate this old machine shop. And it was just, just beautiful. And um, <clears throat> then after about five years, the landlord came in and said that uh, instead of $1,200, the rent was going to go up to $6,500. Everybody get that? <laughs> so $1,200 to $6,500. And um, it was, the, uh, it was at the beginning of the economic downturn. So <clears throat> I always had a couple jobs going to support the dojo. I was determined to not become a professional Aikido instructor. Um, and those jobs disintegrated and, uh, <clears throat> I had a really strong group of first cues and, uh, they either quit or they had to, uh, leave, leave the town. It was Santa Barbara, California. Some of them had to leave town to find work. They lost their jobs and, uh, and I needed surgery on my knee. And so, as you can imagine, this is one of the most challenging times in my life. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> I think I was out for about five months or so. And in the meantime, the dojo members, some of them were training in the park. Um, <clears throat> and I guess what reinvigorated me, I mean, I was heartbroken to lose that dojo. It was a dedicated space. Uh, they did actually finally, the the, the dojo members who were remaining they did find um a uh, a public hall and uh <clears throat> they got the mats and and said hey you know we're prepared to do this we're going to put down the mats and pick them up each time and um can you just show up and teach please and um yeah so and also that's what i wanted to say was um during that break again because of the surgery on the knee i i i pretty much had to stay away anyway but um during that five or so month break the word that kept coming to mind was bland so the beer didn't taste nearly as good <laughs> the food didn't taste as good those are literal you know bland in the literal sense and also it seemed to me that conversations um, were kind of bland as well. You know, like when you go out with your training partners after a really good workout and you share a bite to eat and um, the silence can be rich or the conversation can be rich, you know, and, and I, I really missed that. And so, you know, coming back, 
even under these circumstances that like, okay, things are still tough because we're gypsies here. Um, but, but yeah, the, the, this is my family. <clears throat> so that helped reinvigorate me. Yeah. I guess it must've felt good to have, have those students set up the mats and yeah. obviously want you to come and teach them. Yeah. Yeah. It was really touching. Okay. Great. So, um, just before I move on and sort of to focus on the topic of the call in terms of motivation for younger people, um, I just like to let everyone know that if you want to submit a question to ask Gaston or Leah Sensei, then please just enter it in the chat box and we'll have 15 minutes at the end when I'll put your questions to the sensei so just write it in the, the chat box and and send it send it through and then we'll look at those in six right yeah quarter, quarter off the hour okay um so yeah so younger people generally underrepresented in today's dojos here in bristol in england where i train we don't have anyone under 40 um, in our dojo and I know it's as we've spoken about it is kind of a general trend in Aikido however I know you both have a healthy number of young people in your classes and um, so yeah perhaps that's a good place to start what do you enjoy about having younger people in your dojo Liz Sensei? Well uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned at the beginning of the call, what attracted me to Aikido in the first place, uh, I used to just say endorphins plus, um, you know, some of the philosophical side and everything. But now I realize, oh yeah, it's the adrenaline and endorphin mix. So I do find it fascinating to, to stand, uh, to, to have not so much of a dynamic class. Um, <clears throat> and think about the movements, the alignment, and all of that. But I find it even more fascinating, more exciting, more fun, if the, <clears throat> the class can include that, plus be very dynamic. And, you know, to be honest, all of us, as we've gotten older, <clears throat> you know, we don't, we, don't, uh, we don't fly as well as we used to. <laughs> And, uh, and if we do a little bit of flying, it takes us like a little while to recharge. And so the, the simple fact is that um, the, the people who are training in their younger years, uh, they, they can move around for longer. Uh, and then they, you know, I, I say, thank you very much. I go to the next pair, I work with them. <clears throat> in the meantime, this guy, you know, some 23 year old, He's recharged and ready to go again after two minutes or three minutes, you know? And so for me, it's just, um, it's, it's just a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, the other point is that um, if we want our dojos to live on after us, mm -hmm. then who are we going to pass this to? You know, I'm not going to pass it to somebody, you know, one year younger than me or something. But if I can... <clears throat> If I can support a young person all the way to the point where they're capable, much like it sounds like uh, is the case with Gaston Sensei and his Sensei, uh, Frank Noel Sensei, um, that's that's another big goal of mine. Um, I've worked really hard to create uh, this community and and this organization. So wouldn't it be nice if it does not die with me? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Gaston Sensei, um, <clears throat> what do you enjoy about having younger students in your dojo training with you? Yeah, well, f first of all, uh, as, uh, as Leah Sensei just mentioned, uh, to me, it, it was um, really a necessity to build down uh, to build on the group we're on uh, with uh, the younger generation, because um, as I as I as I took the dojo over in 2018, um, 
I, I really had to really think uh, of the future already, you know, what, 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 because if I, if I look at m my own situation with, with Frank Noel, it, it kind of like, um, I don't know if he, how, you know, how he thought this in his head, etc. but it was, it was um, very uh, tricky, you know, uh, it could have not happened in some, in some ways because it's, it's a, such a big challenge, you know, things can happen in life. I could have moved to, I don't know, back to Madagascar. I could have done anything else. Um, maybe, you know, f financially, the things, uh, the, the buyout would not, would not have been possible, etc. So it was really, really like tricky. And we, and we really waited until very, I mean, the last minute to do this. Right. So, uh, I tried to, to I tried to figure myself uh, being you know 20 years uh, later from now and then say so what am I going to do with this dojo so I don't want to be stuck with the same issue that maybe Frank Noel has had in in his head and uh, you know in his nightmares <laughs> mm. so uh, that's why when I took over this dojo I, I am already thinking of what it's going to be like in in 10 years from 10 years time or 20 years from from here. And how I'm, how I will pass it to someone else, you know. So yeah. that's definitely what drives me. So that means that the the issue of having a younger generation practicing in the dojo is not a minor issue for me. It's a critical issue. So that's my that's really my number one objective to to have them around because you know it takes time to build an aikido ka, you know, to as as a person as a as a as a uh, as a yeah, as an aikidoka, it takes you know maybe uh, a few years. Uh, it's it it takes even more time to build a good teacher, <laughs> you know, uh, to teach uh, to 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 be a um, to be a uh, you know easy with teaching and and and, and uh, understanding all the all the all the different aspects of our of our of our uh, of our job. And uh, so for me, this is very important. And what, what I really like, uh, what, what is it I really enjoy uh, about millennials in the dojo? They bring dynamism and also they, they, they have a different stance uh, towards authority. This is think, something really important, I think. You know, they, they, they kind of question your authority, but in, 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 a, in, a, in a nice way. You know, they, it, it's, not, it's not that they, they like challenge, I mean, of course they challenge you, but they 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 don't hesitate to question uh you know what's at stake or something they didn't understand etc uh in in a, in a very interesting way in a very open way and, mm. and not not aggressively at all you know and this is something that i really like that maybe if, if i if i look back at my own uh, own experience when i was uh, at their age I, I had all those questions in my head you know ringing and bam 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 in my head but I, I, I didn't feel like putting them out, out there and asking them, uh, asking Frank Noel, for instance, or, or my other senpais about this. Uh, we had a, a, a different uh, type of relation, you know, uh, with, yeah. with uh, something more, uh, I don't know, subtle or shy or whatever, but uh, with, with, this, with this younger generation to just come you know, mm. straight forward to you and say, hey, why did you do this and that? I, I don't like it. Or, you know, mm. so th I think this is really interesting, you know, uh, yeah. uh, as long as respect, of course, is, uh, is, uh, is present. Yeah, yeah. I guess that traditional student-teacher relationship is, is, has changed a little bit with this, um, with this generation. Uh, and I'm wondering, so what do you think attracts these younger students to your dojo in particular, Gaston Sensei. Who, uh, Lia Sensei, you want to start? No, with or should I? Uh, no okay. with you, Gaston. Sensei. Okay, okay. Uh, I think, well, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to, you know, to be in their shoes, of course, but I think what, what they liked in, 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 my, um, in my dojo is the, is the care that we, we that i take uh, for, for them really you know i really show them that i care for them like i care for anyone else in the dojo of course but at least i can verb i mean i can verbalize it with them you know, i can tell them okay you you do you are important to this dojo 
and uh, and I don't hesitate to also empower them. Mm -hmm. You know, I give them tasks to do. Yeah. Uh, I don't hesitate to to ask them to lead something. You know, I give them responsibility. Okay, and mm -hmm. one also I think something very important is that they. Um, they really pay attention to to the social dimension of, of the practice, you know, and their social impact on 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 on, on people and on outside the outside the dojo. So, and of course, uh, regarding the techniques and the mat, you have you have to to come up with some dynamic techniques, okay? Which which is fine because uh, we we like dynamic techniques. So. Um, Whenever they, they show up to the dojo, they, they can't go back if, if they haven't sweat in their, in their keikogi. That's number one. They have to sweat their body <laughs> out. And after that, they have to find an open ear to their problem so you can talk with them, right? And maybe also after the dojo, and this is new for me, uh, after, you know, once they, they're out of the dojo, they, they don't hesitate to send you an SMS, a text message, or they, you know, and, mm. and, and, you know, you, 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 you have to answer and you have to be with them and, and don't uh, like ghost them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So in your experience, yeah, they, they like a sensei who's approachable. Yeah. They can ask questions to <clears throat> like a dynamic practice where they get a good workout and they, get a sweat on mm -hmm. and they like to be given responsibility, like have some trust and faith put in them by their sensei. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's really uh, the bottom, the bottom issues. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Lea sensei, um, in your experience, what, what's attracting younger people to your dojo? Uh, the same as everything that Gaston sensei said, um, empowering them, giving them tasks. Uh, I, I, I think one of the big ones is like he said, to show that he cares, to show that I care. Um, and, and that means, uh, yeah, opening up a little bit more than what, in fact, it would have been a bit unsettling for me <clears throat> when I was in my twenties. I started when I was like 22 it would have been a little unsettling for me if, if the sensei had been as open and approachable and available as I am now with my students. But it seems to, it seems to really work with this generation and make sense. Um, <clears throat> and it, it's counterintuitive for me because, because of my Aikido upbringing. Uh, and that's another thing I want to say to d digress for a moment is that um, <clears throat> what I needed to do was I needed to try it just like on the mat. You have to try things differently. If something's not working, you try different things, even if they feel wrong, either, even if they feel counterintuitive, you try them and then, and then you pay attention <laughs> and then you keep what works and, and mm. get rid of what doesn't. And sure. so, um, I had heard from a few people, you know, oh, you should, you should contact people after their first class, or if you haven't seen them for a week. And, and I knew like, from my experience, if my sensei had contacted me, any, I, I had three different senseis in my, my life. Now my sensei for the last 30 years is Takeda Shihan. But if any of them, the American ones, the, the Japanese one, <clears throat> if they had contacted me and said, hey, I didn't see you in the dojo last week, everything okay? I would have like, oh my God, you know, like <laughs> seppuku, you know, like <laughs> I already would beat myself up so much if I missed class. I, I had my three classes per week that I attended religiously. And then if I could do more, I would do more. So oftentimes it was five, six days a week. But anyway, um, <clears throat> what happened for me coming up in the ranks in Japan, I still to this day <clears throat> remember my senpai saying one time, hey, 
you know, since I was asking about you, he, he's, he's, he was a little concerned, but I told him that you broke your toe. And I said, oh, wow. And I was so shocked that Sensei even would notice that I wasn't at the dojo. Mm. And uh, this is Takeda Sensei. And, um, and it felt so good for me to know that, like, oh, wow, Sensei was talking about me? Sensei cared about me? You know, but it wasn't direct. And, and this was in Japan. And I think more generalizations here again you know everybody's different but in general uh the the senpai kohai relationship in japan i think a senpai will take a little bit more responsibility of taking you under your wing under his wing his or her wing a uh, little bit more so than what we see in the u.s in general mm. um so you know kadoya san um found a found a way to let me know about that anyway so <clears throat> um i used to say to some of the senpai oh where's so and so and they would go like i don't know <laughs> and i go oh well let them know that you know that i'm wondering about them and and then when i finally saw that other person i'd say oh you know i, I don't remember exactly how but i would find out that, that the communication wasn't really there so if i wanted them to know that i cared about them um, you know, just contact them. And, uh, and so I found that it was the opposite with them that it, that it would have been for me. They were really touched, really moved. Uh, yeah. and they are really touched and really moved. And mm. I don't go into, Hey, I didn't see you last week in the dojo. And if you want to get good at the, I don't go into any of that. Um, I send a text that says, you know, Hey, Bob, didn't see you at the dojo last week. Everything okay? That's it. That's my standard. Or to parents. Hey, so-and-so, I didn't see your child. I didn't see little Bobby at the dojo yes, uh, last week. Everything okay? And then yeah. a conversation begins. And, and a really funny thing was that one time uh, I was make, doing these texts on my computer. You can use Google Voice on your computer. And I forgot and I clicked the wrong thing. And before I knew it, my computer, you know, the, the phone was ringing via my computer. And this 22, 23 year old guy said, oh, hello. And, and before he picked up, I thought, oh, no, oh, you know, this age group that they, they like, again, the generalizations, the stereotypes that we have. I thought, oh, no, they don't like phone calls. I should have texted. What am I doing? Before I could change anything, he picked up, he said, hello. I said, oh, uh, I think it was Austin. I said, Austin, sorry to call. I hope this is an okay time. And uh, just checking in. Didn't see you at the dojo last week. And he said, oh, wow. And he was really touched that I had called rather than texted. He said, wow, you know, oh, thanks for calling, you know, and this is what's going on. That's what's going on. And, and then when we finished our conversation, we chatted for a while about everything going on in his life. When we finished up, he called me again. Thanks for calling. I was like, wow. Wow. So, so yeah, conversely to your own kind of Aikido journey, you find that younger people appreciate um, that personal touch. Yeah. And um, do you find that it, you know, if someone hasn't trained um, for a while, that um, it's a way that it, it helps them to um rediscover motivation or come back to the so. dojo i think so and also <clears throat> in those conversations you know and this is again completely counterintuitive for me uh in those conversations like if they say oh yeah thanks sensei yeah i just had a crazy week uh at work last week uh but i should be there next week at, next week and then completely counterintuitive but it works and they appreciate it. I say, okay, great. Monday, see you Monday. And then they'll say, oh, no, Monday I have a meeting. Tuesday will probably work. And I go, okay, uh, I'll, I'll reserve it. And so mm -hmm. now we have a software where you can reserve a class and it sends a notification, uh, an automated text notification, like reminder beforehand. 
Um, yeah. So this is another huge difference. When I was first doing Aikido, there, I, I think, I want to say that there were not so many distractions. Yeah. So it was easier to keep track of our activities and our schedule. But now I think, you know, I mean, I need those reminders for all different things. So. Mm. Okay, great. Yeah. So keeping in touch and having a space reserved in the class um, yeah. helps with that. Okay, great. Guess can I, yes, can I, can I just add something to, to, to this? You know, uh, w w the question was uh, uh, what, what attracts young, you know, younger people in the dojo. I think uh, there's um, something very, very simple also that you, you guys can do is to break this uh, financial insecurity, of course, also because the, those people don't have the means in general to to pay for their classes i mean uh, to pay the regular fares so re you you have to be i mean this is what i did in my dojo i was really aggressive uh, on the on the fares uh maybe down 50 percent 40 percent whatever as long as they show up you know and um and then you can you can you can also then have a sort of um a different uh relationship with, with, the, with the person because then you can uh, the tasks that you you may ask, of course, uh, then uh, can be a sort of compensation of that, you know, mm. because most of the times they're struggling as students uh, to you know to to make uh, ends meet, and yeah. and they they I really noticed this. I I, I think it, in in my period when I was there about this age, it was not that bad, you know. You could really survive with a little money and. Uh, you know doing your your college studies etc and still you could pay for your for your uh, you know leisures but now things have toughened up and uh, i see a lot of young students that are really uh in in uh, in, um, in pain financially mm. and uh and this is something maybe that i, I know that in in the us you know the the money issue can be can you know can come up rather rather easily people can talk about money easily but in france it's really difficult in the european culture people don't talk about money so much you know mm. in, in, no, nobody ever asks you how much you make etc because it's it's rather taboo so uh it really takes uh, uh for me it's a it's a real effort to come forward and and, and really put this question out on the table and say uh of course uh, if you if you have some financial difficulties we can we can we can deal with that please please be 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 at ease with this and um i think that's really also something that attracts people in the dojo and then once they know that it's not going to be an issue anymore then they can also talk to their their friends about this you know their fellow students or their friend hey, hey you know what you can come uh, they're really cool about the money you can pay later you can do this and that and that so this is really i think mm -hmm. something very concrete but you know yeah. if, if possible of course if, if the, econom the economics of your of your structure allows for this then you know you should go ahead with that yeah so be flexible with with yeah. rates yeah yeah works in your dojo and 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 then sort of but with a bit of compensation you can make bigger demands of that student yeah because remember as i said you're investing in, 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 in those people you know yeah. it's, it, it's not it's not lost of course along the way some people will just maybe take advantage of that i've, I've been through this you know all millennials are not great people in that respect you know but it's part of the game mm. you're being generous you're being generous Okay, great. And um, is there anything else if you like sense that a student might be, or a younger student might be on the edge of quitting or losing motivation? Is there anything else that you find works quite well with that age group to reinvigorate their practice? Communication. You know, sometimes it's just simply a question of uh, not feeling well with uh, somebody or a group of people in the dojo because they they're beginners and, and they think that they will, uh, you know, uh, be a, a hustle for, for, for the uh, advanced people, for instance, advanced uh, uh, Aikido class or some, you know, rest, <laughs> how do you get a, 
uh, vestiaire, restroom issues, you know, stuff that happened within the in the changing rooms that you don't know about, and then they they build, you know, they go crazy about this, this tiny little issue. So you really have to address it. And, and for this transparency, mm. um, communication, and uh, and having you know have an open mind, you know, about about everything. So that's also something yeah. uh because i've not I've, I've had a one bad experience with somebody that actually left the dojo uh for a really stupid reason you know when we found out it was that reason then we said oh, you know nobody ever thought about that you know so the guy was was vexed he didn't so you know happens <laughs> yeah so sure. there's transparency communication also okay great um liz sensei do you have anything to add to that before i yeah, uh, <clears throat> I agree. Transparency and um, and communication. I would add a little bit to the uh, to the discount idea. Uh, we have a scholarship program, and um, it's mostly it's mostly for the kids, um, but we have extended it a few times for some some people uh, like in their early to mid twenties. Um, but what we do is I, I don't, cause I don't want to talk to them. I, I don't, I want a teacher student relationship, not a business owner and customer relationship as much as possible. So I tell them, Oh, really? You've got, Oh, student loans. Yeah, that's terrible. In America, it's, it's incredible how much they, they owe when they come out of university. That's so, true. So I say, okay, you know, uh, we've got a scholarship program and our board of directors will, will vote, will review your case and will vote on it. Um, so they include some sort of documentation. Maybe it shows how much rent they pay or their tax return or a statement of their student loan, how much money they owe, things like that. And then also, um, and, I just used uh, Google Forms for this. So any of the Dojo Cho, especially in the United States watching this, I would encourage you, and you can even message me uh, and I'll send it to you, I'll share it with you. Um, I would encourage you to make a Google Form scholarship application. And on that application, you say, you know, here's what ours says. Our, our normal registration fee is $50. What can you pay? Our normal monthly, our normal monthly rate is $120. What can you pay? Uh, a uniform costs $50. What can you pay? Everything says, what can you pay? Uh, when I used to just, when somebody would come in and say, ah, oh, but I, you know, I don't have much money. I would say, oh, okay, just pay us $30 a month or, you know, whatever. So I would choose the number. And what I found when I made the scholarship like this is that they almost always offer to pay more than what I would have predicted. So that's mm -hmm. really good. So you ask them what, here are the normal prices. What can you do? Yeah. Um, we also have had a couple of people take advantage of it. So you have to monitor that, you know, um, we found out that there was not uh, a true need in one or two cases. And, um, and so, yeah, then, then you deal with that when that comes up and cool. um, yeah. Okay, great. So again, yeah, sort of having that flexible option for people who are um, struggling a bit financially. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. So, um, Thank you for the last sort of 10 minutes then. Um, we've got one or two questions coming in and we have Cesar San Miguel. We'd like to share a little bit from uh, a weekend Aikido for tomorrow seminar. So, actually, um. Well, we also have some questions. How's it working with parents? What strategies or other things are suggested in building the super young teenagers, etc.? Not sure if we want to go into that in, in this one. Questions yeah. forwarded from Mark, UKA. Oh, that's right. 
We did get some questions by email. They were actually the first ones to come in. Maybe we should discuss these. These came in this morning, and it's exactly this, this age group that we're talking about. Um, yeah, we've got so many, guys. Um, I'll read the one. Uh, last year, we had success attracting 25% more foot traffic to our clubs, retaining half of them. Um, they were all 30 plus years old. What key messages do you use to attract and retain a younger generation in your promotions? I think that's a really good question. Yeah. Shall, shall I start with that since I just read it? Sure, yeah. Um, okay, so, and this is from Mark in the UK, uh, chair of UK Aikikai. Um, so, uh, for, for my first 10 years teaching Aikido, all my posters and everything had a photo of me. Um, you could see that I was a woman and I'm throwing this guy and he's in midair unraveling, I'm gonna hit the ground. And I had so much trouble getting people to, to sign up. <laughs> I thought it was the coolest photo, but anyway, then somebody convinced me, it was difficult to convince me, I'm glad they, they, they uh, didn't give up. Someone convinced me to use a photo of my target that included my target market, some young people. And so I, I had mostly older people in the dojo at that time, but I had one guy who was not even fifth Q, who was like 36. And then I had a 47 year old who looked about 38 or 39. And I took a photo, the best photo I could come up with of them was really bad posture doing an ikkyo, shomenuchi ikkyo, both of them kind of like this. And I put that photo around and I got some more, I got more calls than usual and from younger people. <laughs> so also I found that um, when I would put, when I would, I had the definition of Aikido on the website. And so communications, when, when someone finally would call, they would say, yeah, I was thinking I want to do Aikido, but you know, I don't know, I read your thing and I don't know, it's like kind of meditative, but I'm really into like self-defense. And, and then somebody else like, oh yeah, I, I thought I wanted to do Aikido and it, I think it's really meditative, but I read this thing on your thing and, I, and I, it sounds like it's, so I got rid of the definition of Aikido from my website. And I thought whatever brings them through the door, I'm going to let them, because Aikido is vast anyway. Mm -hmm. Plus, if they start training, then they will find that there are benefits to it that they hadn't expected. Yeah. That's how it is for everybody. Like, oh, I started for self-defense, but now, oh my gosh, I find that there's this and this and this. So you let them come through the door no matter what. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to become a cage fighter. Is Aikido going to help me? Wow, great question. Um, let's explore that. How about seven o'clock? Can you get to the <laughs> by six? I go right for the day and time, you know? Yeah, yeah that's a good okay. one. Great. And yeah, so photos. Yeah, maybe, maybe to add on to this, uh, yeah. uh, I think, you know, how uh, the, the group dynamics is also very important. If you're, if you're a, a part of the generation, it's you, you really like to see that in the dojo, this generation is represented. Okay, so young people attract young people, yep, and uh, your kids attract kids. So, if you if you want to, to uh, so it's always it's, it's, it's difficult to start, of course, <laughs> but once you have a healthy group of, of millennials or, or younger uh, Aikido cast, then you would really easily attract uh, other, other young people. Yeah. Same thing for female uh, Aikido cast because I see that the question sometimes also yeah. uh, was raised there. So um, it's it's uh, it, it's it's all about how to get started. You know how to how to attract these people in the very first place. What what mm -hmm. gonna make them open the, your dojo? You know the door of your dojo. Uh, and for that, you know sometimes you can you can be as good at, at marketing as you as you as you can. And sometimes people come for. For, for their own reasons. You don't know why they're come. So they're there. Once they're there, they don't go out. <laughs> you have to yeah. knock them in. 
Yeah. Okay, great. So maybe on the back of that, um, Gaston Sensei, um, what, there's a question here, what do you actually teach a younger person on their first and second class? Yeah. To well, kind of... Yeah, for me, it's really, uh, I teach them Aikido. You know, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't do like, uh, uh, first, I, 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 we only do Taiso for the first class. And then in, in two weeks or th one month when you're good enough, then we do the uke miso, and then you can start working with, with, uh, with an uke. Now, first class, you do, you do Aikido, uh, like you do it all over. So Taiso, you know, you know, you warm up and then you, 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 uh, you, you start to roll uh, your ukemis and then and then you you, you practice with, with everyone else you know so I really make sure that after their first class they have a good uh, uh, an accurate uh, vision uh, of what it what, what Aikido is all about you know of course I try to adapt my message to them specifically but I really don't discriminate and and, and say okay um, my, I have a, a very strict progression, and, and uh, first, uh, the first class you shouldn't you should not uh, be allowed to do this and that and that. I really try to 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 make them uh, understand and experience the three levels of of, of practice well, that that is really interesting, the 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 geometry, you know, the the, the footwork, okay, the footwork. Yeah. And the body, the way you stand, you know, the, the way you, you carry your own body, you know, uh, relax and, and uh, mobile with the, with the legs. And then, of course, you, you also have to enter the third dimension, which is the, uh, the, um, the social, I mean, the interacting with, with the partner. This is also something that you really need to give uh, at the very beginning. You know, they have to feel that they work with someone. It's not Tai Chi, you know, you don't work alone. So mm -hmm. you can do this on your, on your Zoom classes, but once you're in the dojo, you have to interact with people. Yeah. My, okay, my great. Friends. So you, you just include them along, alongside yes. in, in your regular class from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Liz, do so you have something to add? Yeah, um, I do it a number of different ways. Um, it kind of depends on which other students I have showing up that night at the dojo. So if, if I'm going to have, if I have a lot of uh, my third, second and first cues who like to be, and Shodan who like to be very dynamic um, and the new person strikes me as being sort of timid when they walk in, then I'll often have one of my, my more senior people and my Los Angeles dojo, my senior person, I've got one shodan, I've got one second queue who could be first queue, but we're in quarantine. Anyway, uh, I'll have one of those guys go over to the side with them and give them sort of a private lesson. And uh, in the US, uh, a lot of people that age, they like to have kind of um, an orientation, actually, so to speak. Uh, this is another thing I didn't think would be a good idea, but I tried it. They seem to respond really well to it. They'll have a, a person, another young person, um, take them over to the side to have their mini breakout private lesson. And before they even bow in for their private warm ups, that person will say, Well, you know, we take our shoes off this way, we slip onto the mat, and then uh, we bow at this sign here. And uh, if your knees hurt, you know, sit this way instead of that way. And uh, okay, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to bow. We're going to bow to, you know, and take them through the whole thing privately. Um, and then uh, other times I will integrate that person immediately on the first class. Um, the difference is just that, you know, in my generation, uh, we, we just got thrown right from the first night and I've found that I'm not sure whether it's just scary. I, I'm, I'm not a, a scientist, a, a, a physiologist or anything, but it seems to me that like I grew up in the countryside and 
my brothers and I, the closest neighbors were about a half a mile away. My brothers and I would go out the door in the morning and we'd play all day. We'd run all day. We'd jump, we'd push each other. We'd fight. We, everything. We were very, very physical. And so when I would start some new sport, uh, my body could, could adapt fairly well, you know? And yeah. I found that I need to be more careful than what I thought I would need. When I first started teaching, I tried to do it the way it was done with me. And mm -hmm. um, people's bodies can't do that nowadays. So that's, that's the only that's other true. thing. I'll, yeah. I'll bring everybody together, we'll do stuff together, and then I'll make like little breakout groups. Okay, David, can you show them how to do their forward rolls? And even doing forward rolls, I have them start with the arm out here, they set the shoulder down on the mat. There's no space. Like really, really, really baby steps. And it works, works great. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Um, we have a few more questions here. Um, did you want to have a few more minutes answering questions? Sure. I'm okay doing more questions. Gaston, are you okay? Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay, great. So... If, yeah, feel free to stay on the call and um, I'll ask the senseis to choose, perhaps ask, yeah, perhaps I'll ask you both to have a little look and see what um, question um, you'd like to answer. I feel it would be interesting to discuss here. Yeah, there, there's this question from, from Sarah, mm -hmm. uh, for both of us, Leah Sensei, uh, about, uh, about being approachable. Mm. Can, we, can we elaborate on how you achieve this and also how have you've approached working on this? Uh, again, I, as I said, I think uh, it's um, it, it's part of uh, it's part of a, of, a, of a, if it so if it's part of your strategy, you know, you, you 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 know that you have somehow to depend on this group. Okay, so then. Uh, things are pretty straightforward, you know, it, it's not, you don't fake it, you know, you, you just being open uh, and uh, for instance, very, very, very um, um, concrete ways of doing this, you know, first, of course, you, you always arrive earlier uh, before your class, you know, you have to be there before, maybe half an hour before the class and then you have to stay longer after the class. So you're available to them. Yeah. You can't just show up maybe two minutes before the class and then run away. And, and so they, they want a chance to approach you. So you have to be available physically. And then uh, if you have a, a, an office or something, which is my case, the door has to be open, of course, always open. And then you also have a, a, few, a few senpais of the group, a few people that, you, that you're familiar with. And they have to spread this word around that you're you're open. You know, you if they have questions, they just can, you know. Of course, they can ask their their senpai. They can also come to you. Okay, so very very easy ways, very you know uh, tangible ways of doing this. Very physical way. Just open the door, talk to them, smile, and uh, and that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. So be available. Be open um great Leah do you have something to add to that uh same I think and and actually Sarah started Aikido with me in Los Angeles now she's in the Netherlands so um who knows maybe she even has some some uh feedback on on how I managed to be approachable or maybe she's like no you need to be more approachable <laughs> and so yeah. there's one more thing humor maybe maybe the yeah humor. yeah <laughs> And Definitely. oh, that's another thing. I did an interview uh, with another instructor one time, and and the question was one of the questions was, um, you know, I want to start my own dojo. What's your advice to me as a beginner instructor? And this teacher who had also spent some time in Japan, he said, well, the first thing I tell people who want to start a dojo is get over yourself. Don't take yourself so seriously. Just get <laughs> over. <it." laughs> And I, I think that's really good advice, actually. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, and any questions, uh, calling you'd like to speak to? 
Leah Sensei? There's, there's a lot. Uh, we are a bit over time. Um, first of all, I think everybody should know that uh, I'll, I'll respond uh, and we will have the links to, uh, well, I'll put the video up on uh, wherever it needs to be. Now I forget. And um, I'll send the link to everybody so you can review. And um, maybe we could add more of the answers to the questions um, yeah. once they're published somewhere. Um, and I think that uh, I'm probably going to put together a course about this. So stay tuned. Uh, I've got everybody's email addresses because as we spoke, I just thought of so many more um, things, practical steps that you could take and implement. You know, uh, I could really help people with their websites or, you know, whatever. And uh, I've, I've got a lot of step-by-step -step ideas. So that might be a next step for me is to sort of put together a course or, or something or a regular meeting or whatever to support people and help people. Mm -hmm. um, so be on the lookout for those things. Great. And, uh, yeah. I've just pasted a couple of links into the, the chat box if people want to yeah, find out more about you both um, after the call. Excellent. Okay. Um, great. Um, right, so let's wrap it up. Thank you so much, um, Gaston and Leah Sensei, for being on the call. Yeah. Thanks to everyone who who came along and joined us. Yes, Gaston. What? Just maybe, uh, what, what, uh, I have prepared a, a, an easy maybe way to, to sum it up for uh, not only for, for millennials, but maybe as a teacher, what you need to do to keep people motivated, you know, I think, um, so we, we've called it the three A's, you know, uh, so it was in French, the, it was three A's in French and I managed to actually translate them uh, in English, so please <laughs> be uh, uh, well maybe nice to it. So it's very, you know, very easy, you know, so the first A that you need to play on, uh, to play with is achievement. Give your students a sense of achievement, you know, once they enter the dojo, they have to, after one class, after one cycle, after one year, or a few seasons, they have to, 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 to get away with a sense of achievement, okay? And then the second A is amusement, you know, fun. They have to have fun. You know, you, you don't want to go to a place where everybody's like, ah, it's so sad and crying. You know? So it, have to be, it has to be fun, all okay? right? And the last A is, is affiliation, okay? A sense of fellowship. People need to be, uh, you know, bound together. You know, they have to have this sense of uh, of community. All right. So this is just what I, I wanted to to end up with. There's a, remember those three A's. Okay, achievement, amusement, and affiliation. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Um, any final words, Leah? I don't think so. I don't think so. I want to thank everybody for coming. It was really wonderful. And I feel like we're just getting started on this topic. So, yeah, it's a big topic. Thank you so much for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for coming. And so, Gaston and uh, Nick, why don't you stay on the call? And we'll ask everybody else to uh, check out. And then we'll continue chatting. Wow, well. I love your messages. Oh, nice. Hard to get to see the long view. Yeah. Wow. So many messages. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, everybody. Wow. We'll answer the questions. The so questions. Sorry that we couldn't get to, to you sharing yours. Stay tuned, please. We'll do more. And I do especially want to hear from Cesar. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Don't know if he could hear me, but.
And I think I'll go off of Facebook now. Stop the live stream. There we go. <laughs> Cesar, I hope to talk to you more soon. Can you hear me? Yeah, you can. Okay, great. Yeah. We needed more time today, didn't we? It was a really yeah. cool. We just scratched the surface, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least it's going to give a, you know, us matter for, for maybe the next one, another session on this. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Let's see. You got a message from Cesar there, at the bottom. Say that again. Zach. There's a message from Cesar at the bottom there. <clears throat> Zahir, Zahir, right? <laughs> Did you? Yeah. yeah. Let me see if I can actually get people out. Move. Okay. I'll start removing. Do you want to remove? Once removed, he will not be able to rejoin the meeting. Okay. That they'll be able to come back someday. Oh, there they go. Okay. Wow. I was nervous for that one. You were? Because yeah. you had to, to run also the, you know. The, yeah. The, yeah, technically. I did get a message from Gretchen. She said she was having trouble logging into Zoom. Maybe what it was was that uh, Zoom recently upgraded to a new version. And uh, they kept giving warnings that you had to upgrade or you wouldn't be able to get on your next meeting. And so maybe she didn't upgrade beforehand. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, it went fine. I mean, you did really well. So was... Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I think, I think that people were rather happy about us from what I you see on the, on the text conversation. Yeah. But... Um, And I should be getting a, um, I think I'll be getting a, uh, a download of the video and the chat, but I'm gonna, I'm going to um, create a, uh, a document with the chat in just in case. So let me do that right now. Maybe yeah, you're right, Leah. What we should do is to maybe uh, answer those questions. Yeah. You know, uh, since we have them, you know, yeah. we'll answer back to them in a written written form. Very nice. Um, I, I feel some kind of frustration in in the audience. I think because the, yeah. as you said, we just like uh, uh, went. Of course, you know, the format is only an hour, so we can really go deep into it. Right. Into things. So maybe it's, it, it, we can we can do better with, with the written questions, yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, uh, material for like follow-up and everything here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, it was a rich topic, for, yeah, for sure. There's, yeah. there was more. Yeah. But see, see the, the, um, the, you know, we were a little bit worried that, the, the, you know, the label would play out negatively etc it didn't play out at all you know it was right. people really understood that you know it was just about the younger generation and yep. what we could do to help them out and, and you know have this uh, population grow in our dojo so that was good that was good yeah, yeah. Mm. well and yeah. we don't know like most of the people were looked to be maybe from their 50s and above yeah, yeah. Well, except that's that's one of the comments in the post here, is saying that maybe we should have uh, uh, had more like uh, more millennials in the in the in the in the panel. That's next. Here's my next idea, you guys. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. <clears throat> my next idea is that in the follow up, we say, "Stay tuned for our next event." I already talked with. Uh, remember Mark Falzone, Nick? Yep. Mark is a 32 year old marketer. And I said, Mark, 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 oh my gosh, people are interested in this thing that I'm doing. And 
in fact, I thought he was going to be here on the call today. I don't think I saw him, but I said, people are excited about this and millennials are saying this and that because I'm stereotyping. But then I asked a couple of my millennial students and they said, well, we don't care about the label or the name. Anyway, I said, you know, and then you've got millennials who are, you know, 30, 35, Nidan, Sandan. What we really need is to have another panel discussion with some millennials who are like fifth Q or maybe not even fifth Q. And, oh, and I don't even know if they're millennials actually. Maybe, you know, 20 to 30 years old mm -hmm. and not even fifth Q or, you know, below fourth Q or something. We choose, we choose these people, you know so that they can remember clearly their first night and maybe they tried another dojo or two. Um, and wouldn't that be cool if you had some students from your dojo in France who fit that um, description? I do, I, I do. Actually, I, I noticed that a few of them were, were present on the talk. Wonderful. And, yeah, yeah. And they're really like texting me like, it was great and we, we wish we had, we had more time, etc. So. Like, uh, yeah, I could uh, come up with those. Um, this those is people. what. I, yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. So I yeah. mean, I I tried really hard to say, this is what, and you did too. I thought you did an excellent job of simply saying, this is what worked for me. This is what mm. didn't work for me. Yeah. And I wanted, uh, before the call, I kept reminding myself, don't say, this is what millennials are like, or this is what you right. think. Mm. You know, I don't know what they think, but this is what works. Um, but if we have a panel of people like that, they can say, this is how I feel. And this is yeah, how I yeah. feel. And this is why I like her dojo and all of that. So that'd be, that'd be, I think it's a good idea because then we can be a little bit, maybe less in front of the scene, you know, they, they yeah. could, they could, like, yeah. you know, say uh, things more, more than we, we can do. So yeah 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 it sounds like it'll be a really powerful yeah all right so uh, <laughs> it's on you now <laughs> yeah and yeah so anyway um i'll i'll work on that and uh yeah it'd be cool to have some young people from from a few different mm. dojos so that'd be yeah. nice yeah i've written down Thank you for your, you've done a terrific job nick <laughs> Yeah, Nick, excellent. Good journalist. Thank I, you. I really like I appreciate being able to do them. It's always very insightful. Hmm. Nick, what I really like about when you do the interviews is that, um, first of all, you, you're very good at asking the question and stepping back. Also, and I, I'm pretty sure you did this today, when something else comes up, that would be a good digression or sub question you know when to take that and when to leave it yeah so you did that once today right yeah 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 he did that yeah and you also have this this, this great quality i think of uh after a long talk of leah sensei or myself you know to stomach and 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 you know just uh say the, the the what we just said in a nutshell like okay so this and that and that and you pinpoint the good you know the good points and and that's it so that's really good so that helps people help people to absolutely you know, yeah just to remember to, yeah or they might miss something yeah to re reaffirm that's good great thanks so um, i had one idea uh, actually during the call um i'd like to put to you both if we're going to do another call is um i wondered if it would make it feel a bit more connected if if um if either of you wanted to add a comment to the other person yeah so we were doing it a little bit at the end but sort of in the sort of the questioning section to jump in yeah 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 or yeah. well, if you had a question you wanted to say gaston if you had a question you wanted to ask Leah or actually something. i did at one stage i wanted to 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 jump in uh, after after what you just said when you said that uh, this this uh, student of yours you know she she actually saved her marriage thanks to aikido you know my my examples in france are, the, are, are totally the opposite you know people break up because 
the, the husband or the or the uh, or the wife spend too much time at the dojo and they sometimes meet someone else, you know. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought and, um, of that too, but I thought I'm not gonna. Say that <laughs> but I didn't want to be negative, so yeah. <laughs> that's a good. One. That does happen here. But you're right. Maybe we need to, yeah. Interact more. without making it too messy, though. You know, I think it's always also good that you know Leah Sen says says what she has to say up to the up to the full mm. extent of, of what she has in mind, and then I can also say something. Uh, well, it's uh, but that's your job. You're the moderator. You. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought it'd be nice. I mean, that you're right. Yeah, I think it's nice to have somebody um, sort of orchestrating the the call. Um, yeah. But I also feel that if it would add an, it would add a bit more relaxation to it as well. Yes, if, you're right. You I to think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Ask the question to each other. I agree on that. I agree on that. I think it's uh, something we can do uh, more next next time if we do yeah. this again. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah. Thanks so much. Great to meet yeah. you, on Sensei. Time for Thank dinner <laughs> for me. Yeah. And we <laughs> you too, right? Yeah. We didn't uh, mention the uh, seminar in uh, Toulouse in France, but I'll do that by email then. Yeah, we forgot. You're right. Yeah. We, we, we will. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's the seminar? Uh, I'm okay. inviting Leah Sensei over to, to Toulouse in, in October, you know, for her first seminar in Toulouse in, 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 in my dojo. So. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'll have to see if I can get that on my calendar as well then. I think. I think maybe it's also good that we, we maybe didn't, we could have said it at the end, yeah. but saying it now, you know, with the question is also a good idea because uh, if we had started with that, maybe people would have seen it as like a, you know, a marketing way. <laughs> I see. But yeah, certainly yeah. at the end, we could have done yeah. that maybe. But anyway, yeah, it's not that I have everybody's email addresses now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But, uh, I, what did should we I should I let you do the flyer? Do you have a? Oh. Or should I do it myself? Um. Or what do you prefer? I usually don't like to be the one doing the flyer. Okay. Okay. So you just send me a, a good picture of yourself, and and uh, okay. I'll, I'll I'll draft it. Okay. Okay. Whoa. We That'll have... be a nice a, a nice moment to to also maybe come up with the flyer, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, make a draft and send it to me and then <clears throat> I can. All right, okay. Say. Uh, I just looked at the numbers. We had 62 people register for this. Wow, great. Yeah, I mm. think that's more than the last one. The last one might have been, only by a little bit, but the last one might have been 60. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, this one, uh, um, this one definitely feels like it's unfinished as well. Uh, the other one's also, that's also good. I think, you know, that's what I mean. that, that you give, you know, food for thought. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, I think that we'll get a lot of mileage out of this, so to speak. And the last one was sort of one complete, uh, package. It was, it felt finished at the end, which, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, okay. But this one, it feels like we could really, you know. That, that, but that, that know only means better. that the, the topic is, is really fertile, you know. Really That's fertile, really, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 It's a critical issue. Yeah. 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 All right, guys. I think I need to go to uh, <laughs> yeah. catch up with my family life. So, yeah. thanks. Okay. Thanks, Take thanks very much. And, uh Stay in touch, Leah. Let me let me let me know if you need some help with the questions. Of course, if you yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye. Again. Thanks. So you 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 shut me down now, or should, yes. uh, Do I do this? I'm gonna shut either way. Um, <laughs> I don't. One, I don't know how to do. Two. Oh, it's me.